Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 22 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 25 today for the Australian Grand Prix in Season 2. If you guys did miss the previous episode and this Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, because that was perhaps our best race yet, and it was jam-packed with action, as Jeddah always is. We really saw the emergence of Hamilton versus Verstappen 2.0, a bit of controversy as was the case in 2021 with their two fightings at the front into turn one especially literally the same place as where all the drama happened back in that year and then for us it was an exceptional race with our first ever podium on this game and for the team of course it's the it's the team's second podium overall the first one went to Felipe Drogovic our season one teammate back in uh, you know, the, the Belgium Grand Prix and uh, you know it was a long time coming twice we were in a podium position and we had engine failures at Spa and then of course at the Mexican Grand Prix so third time's lucky we did it we got on the podium and we showed a lot a lot of good race pace and even Albon did even though he didn't get points because of where he started and also the Ferraris holding him up that it kind of masked it a bit but you kind of saw glimpses of the pace of the car in general ahead of the race weekend then in activity timeline we get a department event for the personnel uh, regarding Albon either we can boost his racecraft or boost his experience at the moment I'd rather boost his racecraft because plus seven is a massive booster on the stats and remember this episode as was the last episode I recorded it all before the patch came in this week, the patch 1.06. So my personnel upgrades in this episode are still not applying. So Albon is at his base level stat. So plus seven with that activity timeline event, that's going to be quite a big positive step in the right direction because that plus seven will actually apply to him properly, unlike the personnel of uh, you know uh, upgrades we made, which will come in finally next episode because from next episode, I will be recording... Uh, you know, the, the, the episodes after the patches come in. But because of that, for now, in terms of spending any money, because we do have over $13 million in the bank, we are going to spend it on another marketing upgrade on the activities management, because we already have the sponsor relations. So that's going to be a bit of a cheaper upgrade. That allows me to still have a decent amount of cash, because straight away, once we know the personnel upgrades are going to apply, I'm going to probably buy another one, because they're so useful. We know that from the last two F1 games. It's so powerful for pushing your teammate up the stats and making him perform well. But what's also going to help are the upgrades we've got going into this race weekend because you can see the massive leap we have made now from Jeddah to Australia. We have leapfrogged Alpine and we're pretty much level with Ferrari and Mercedes. The same Mercedes that Hamilton has won two races in and he's really taken the fight. But you can see there Red Bull still technically should have an advantage on paper but that kind of maybe shows how much of a better job Hamilton's AI individually is doing because we know Russell has actually not been anywhere near him so far this season so that's how well Lewis is doing to take the fight to Max and take the fight to Red Bull but we are there we are there with Mercedes and Ferrari technically should be there but we know that maybe Leclerc is really low focus having lost that championship and Piastri is just very low rated so right now Ferrari are not kind of in the fight there so I mean into this episode Episode, we kind of almost could call ourselves the third best team on the grid and level pegging with Mercedes as the second best team on the grid, which is insane. Like I said, eventually it was such a grind in season one that eventually you get to a point where it all starts domino affecting. And even though we've got reduced R&D, reduced cash and, you know, the AI have got boosted stuff, you know, we've been able to catch up with them because we've invested in resource uh, and development generation. Albon being obviously more experienced as well gives him more R&D every practice session. At the same time though, I feel like we are going to be maybe caught up later down the line because we are we've got a good momentum going here but eventually we're going to get to upgrades that are very expensive that, you know, we're like, I'm talking like 1.5k and right now we've got 1.4, it's enough to buy a minor weight reduction upgrade on the chassis side of things so we're again really delving into the chassis upgrading. Already we've gone from the worst chassis on the grid to halfway down, uh, you know, the fifth best chassis on the grid. So we've got two more upgrades pending on the chassis side. One aero. That's going to get us ahead of Mercedes and Ferrari, technically. You can see by that chart. But by the time those upgrades come in, 
I'm suspecting AI will also upgrade. And also, because we've got reduced R&D, reduced cash, maybe teams around us, like Alpine, McLaren, who are building to come back and get to the top of F1, just like us, maybe they're going to have level 3 on an HQ facility. Maybe they're going to push ahead of us. You know, we saw how much of a gap McLaren had last season with that one massive upgrade they had into one of those race weekends. Effectively, we've done that right now into Australia. There's no, you know, there's a good chance that Alpine, McLaren, McLaren or anyone, Ferrari, Mercedes, do that themselves into a future race. But right now, it is looking good. It is looking very, very good. But before we get into qualifying, guys, today's video is sponsored. Yep, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. You may have seen me talk about these guys in the last two months in some videos. They're a great VPN service, easy to install, really easy to use, and have jam-packed features and can be used on multiple devices. Whether you're traveling and don't want to be locked out of your bank account, be safe on public Wi-Fi, want to unlock geolock content or just want to protect your data basically then Surfshark is for you. Now one of the biggest things I use Surfshark for and probably a lot of you is unlocking content simply putting you in a different place in the world to unlock content that wouldn't be available to you otherwise in your country. Now you can use this for things like Netflix shows by unlocking you know Marvel films or just different films that are geolocked to certain countries or even accessing Formula One streams by placing yourself in the country you need to be for that streaming service. Simply by just having the extension, a few clicks, and you can be in a different country and watching different content. So if that sounds good to you guys, then you can get Surfshark VPN today via the link in the description and use the code ARIVA at checkout for 83% off and three extra months for free. And when you think about it, that deal is actually insane. You're just left paying 17% of what the total price usually would be, and you get three months completely free as well. So use the link down below in the description, but Let's get on with the rest of the video. Qualifying time then for the Australian Grand Prix, and I am raring to go. I'm very curious to see how our car performs around here. Not just only in the hands of myself, but also Albon. You know, even without the personnel upgrades, he's highly rated. We saw what he can do at Bahrain. You know, Jeddah, he qualified well. The grid penalty brought him back down, so he won't have a penalty now for this weekend unless something's gone catastrophically uh, wrong on the other side of the garage. So I think, again, we'll see him right up there like he was at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Q1, though, we need to make sure we get out into Q2, and it's quite competitive. And as I alluded to in Season 1, the changes to this circuit mean I feel like I'm not as quick as maybe I was on the old layout. I'm still trying to gain confidence in, you know, chucking the car in, especially on that new uh, section in Sector 1 where you go so quickly now, you know, down one gear only. And even the last sector, finding it difficult to manoeuvre the car with the front end, not wanting to bite as much as you'd hope so across the line. That will get us through into Q2 ahead of Albon in P7. He's in P10, but there's still now a whole session and maybe a third for him to improve. And, uh, you know, it's still very, very tight. But at the sharp end, Hamilton again with an advantage to, uh, to Verstappen by 3 10 there. That's really good for him. Meanwhile, Ricardo and the McLaren knocked out uh, as the main kind of one that sticks out. Everyone else, really, the usual suspects, making it through into the second part of Quali. But this is where, obviously, we tripped up over at Jeddah. So this time, not going to make the same mistake. We will go for two laps, uh, you know, and just sit to the end of the session, basically, and not skip ahead and let any random silly little simulation times knock us out, because I feel like we are going to be quick around here. I think Albon's going to be quick, but I'm feeling quicker and quicker. But ultimately, still losing a little bit of time in Sector 2. You see that one-tenth and a bit scrubbed off a tiny bit. We gained back a little bit on the exit by using a lot of curb there. A little cheekily, but a DRS open into the final section. Then a bit too hot on the entry and then the exit. So we kind of gained a bit of time, lost it again. And then these last two corners, they've just been a nightmare. The rest of it's all fine, but I just can't for the life of me get the car turned in there so much understeer then kind of just waiting for the front to bite in through the final corner but we are going to have about three tenths gained we're down in p11 right now but that will shoot us up into the top 10 it's the lucky number p7 for us albon though up in p3 he's in p3 in q2 i know it doesn't matter right now the top 10 shootout that's where it matters but that is still mega for 
Verstappen and Perez, though, coming back at Mercedes and Hamilton. Don't know what happened to Hamilton. He's down in P6 then, so that's a good answer for the Red Bulls. Vettel and the Aston Martin to, to say, look, look back at the, uh, that R&D chart, to say where Aston Martin are in the standings R&D-wise, to have Vettel there in P5 is quite mystifying. Leclerc does get through into the top 10, the Ferrari. Piastri in his home race, knocked out. Sainz gets through in the Haas, as well as Magnussen in the Williams, I've got to say as well. I forgot to mention him almost. Magnussen in the Williams. That is, you know, Williams on a bit of an upturn. Could be this be the first race of many where we see Magnussen drag that Williams car into the top 10 and into maybe some cheeky points tomorrow on Sunday. We'll have to find out, but here we are then on our one and only flying lap because we used all the other fresh tyres to get through here. Albon has had two runs and he's already uh, at least minimum above Sainz in P6. So at least minimum P5 here Albon is. So we've got to try and answer that across the line. What's it going to be for us? We're going to be in P5 ourselves and Albon will be ahead of us in P4. Alexander Albon in our car is on the second row of the grid, but we're there in P5. We are best of the rest. It's Red Bull, Mercedes, Red Bull, and then both our cars ahead of the Ferrari. Leclerc, though, showing finally maybe that's where the Ferrari belongs. Just behind us, maybe, with a lack of confidence. He's got a lack of focus. That's awesome, but Carlos Sainz and the Haas, very close behind in seventh place. Ocon, Vettel, and Magnussen. No surprise there at that pecking order. Eventually, you know, the pace just kind of wasn't there for Vettel or Magnussen enough to kind of join everyone and be close. And Verstappen gets a very much needed pole position. Hamilton, two wins in a row now to start the season. He should have won Jeddah. He needs to win here to bounce back and have an answer for Lewis and Mercedes. For us, though, P4 and P5, sky's the limit. I genuinely think we can go for a podium again. And if it's not us, Albon ahead of us in P4, he could be the one that goes for the podium. I mean, I really wouldn't, wouldn't mind. If he gets on the podium, I don't. I wouldn't mind because it would be back-to-back -back podiums either way for the team. Let's go to the grid. This is really, really bloody exciting. You can hear the Australian fans roaring as they line the track here at Albert Park. Welcome to Melbourne. And the roar from the crowd could only mean one thing. It's race day. The Melbourne circuit is certainly one that needs to be taken seriously. Its combination of slippery surfaces and difficult corners make it a tricky track when it comes to overtakes. Drivers find it hard to pass and will need to take full advantage of those DRS zones if they want to have any hope of breaking through. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, Albon, the owner driver, and Leclerc. Sainz, Ocon, Vettel, and Kevin Magnussen. Joe, Oscar Piastri, Lando Norris, and Russell. Bottas, Gasly, Nicholas Latifi, and Daniel Ricciardo. Stroll, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, and Felipe Dragovic. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Natalie Pinkham joins me once again in the commentary box. It's fantastic to have you with us today. I'm curious though, how do you think the drivers stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming? when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It'll keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. It is a bit overcast here around Melbourne, but there is no rain on the way, I believe. It's just going to look a bit doom and gloom, but let's hope that is not the mood of this race to come up, because there goes Albon in P4, and we are here in P5. This is uncharted territory for our team in terms of... Of, of, course, of course, we were in this kind of position at Spa, in that mad Q3 where Drogovic was on the front row because of the penalties, and we were right up there. But this time, it's different. This time, we have a car that I know we should at least minimum be keeping this P4 and 5. And you just don't know what could happen. 
with the cars ahead of us. You know, Hamilton and Verstappen came to wars last episode. If they do that again and we're close enough to pick up the pieces, you know, we could be in for an insane race. So never say never in Formula 1. I just I just feel really good about this one uh, and just happy to all to be out qualifying other cars on merit, on pace. Leclerc, you know, our rival other teams like Alpine, Haas and McLaren and just great to be here at best of the rest behind the two Red Bulls and the lone Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. And with that, it is time to go. And I feel like this could be a very special race, potentially, as we go to five red lights down under for the Australian Grand Prix. Lights out, and away we go. It's a good start for Albon, and slow one for Hamilton. And in third, fourth gear, we climb up the gears with the ERS, but into turn one, very tight stuff. But Perez locks up. Perez with the lockup, and Albon now straight away is up into P3. We're up into P4, so almost immediately Immediately, we're into a pony position as a team. They'll be deep into that corner as we try and get used to the car with heavy fuel. Yellow flags behind. I think Drogovic drops down the order. Ricardo drops down the order. George Russell trying to make up places in P17 after being knocked out in quali and having a poor day on Saturday. But Verstappen, wow, what on earth happened there? Hamilton got such a poor exit through turn one. Now Verstappen is already 2.3 seconds clear. He's looking to lay down a marker and, you know, basically have a statement of intent of coming back into this championship fight early on because, of course, having lost the, the, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix race, being beaten by Hamilton the first one fair and square, he needs to basically go on to dominate this one to kind of, you know, just have, in, have confidence in himself, I guess, and the team that they're in this fight because uh, I'm very surprised that Lewis has won the first two races, but that is a statement. By the end of lap one, 2.8 seconds as there's some absolute great scrapping going on in the bottom uh, of the points paying positions into the midfield there. Guan Yu Zhou being done round the outside by Pierre Gasly. Great move there for the Frenchman. On the soft compound though, Lando was fighting in there as well. Magnussen keeping the P10 for now, but Lando trying to ruin it. And you got Guan Yu Zhou there as well, trying to make a move into turn one. Piastri as well, his home race looking to make places. He's overtaken Guan Yu Zhou. We're still focusing though on Magnussen versus Norris. Magnussen is going to get squeezed out of team in the Williams car. The, the, the McLaren has the overwhelming pace, although he is on the soft compound, so he'll be pitting earlier. And I think it's the same for Verstappen. That's why he's bolted by 3.5 seconds now on lap two. Meanwhile, I am struggling for grip on the rear end there as the oversteer snaps on the curb. And we've got a face full of Ocon behind us in the mirrors. Perez not too far away. Albon pulling away 1.2 seconds-ish to one second. I mean, we pull him, we reel him in a little bit on the straights because I'm running a little bit of a lower downfall setup, I feel, compared to his default one, probably. But at the moment, we're, we're feeling all the pressure from the Alpine behind. We're defensive, defending the inside line, and we'll hold the racing line then on the exit, and we'll hopefully allow Ocon just to fall into the collapses of uh, Sergio Perez. Ideally, I need Ocon and Perez to fight, just like in Jeddah, needing the AI to kind of battle each other to help me out and give me a bit of breathing room. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Perez is going to go try and overtake Ocon, but it may not be a fight that lasts long because Perez is in a Red Bull car and he goes round round the outside to get up into P5 and now he's got clean air to chase after myself. Lap 4, we are settling down now, so 4 laps in, we're now back under a second and we're gaining on Albon, we're within DRS range now so you know, first couple of laps, I, I will admit, just getting used to the car and the heavy fuel. Like I said, with a lower downfall setup, I was just feeling a little bit nervy on the rear end and the front end. I still am, to be honest, but trying our best to stick with Albon in his DRS. But at the moment, no kind of inkling that we'll have a chance to attack him. And rather, on that five to six, uh, Perez is in our mirrors. And we've lost the DRS now, just about uh, 1.2 seconds behind Albon into the final corner, losing the back end there. So that's what I mean. Just uh, the rear end stepping and just just no confidence on that rear in the last sector. And Perez now looking to make a move. We squeeze him to the right. Go back to the racing line and take the much better, less tight line through turns one. And Perez remains in P5. But he'll have another bite of the cherry with DRS open for the Red Bull man. Checo on the outside. We're defensive again. And we just slow him up a little bit because, again, we can maybe help out Albon here. Help our teammate 
now. Just like we did at Spa with Drogovic, you know, if I'm able to hold Perez and Ocon and even Leclerc up here, that will help Albon. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, actively going to try and hold them up as much as I did in Spa because genuinely I feel like, we, you know, if we get into a bit of a groove, I still feel like we could eventually close back up to Albon. But the gap right now is 2.2, so i got to admit, he's looking bloody quick. You know, that plus seven race craft may be helping out as well. Meanwhile, Vettel doing a good job in P8 in the Aston Martin. Sainz and then Lando rounds out the top 10. Uh, back to the fight, though, with Perez. Focusing on Perez. DRS open for him, but he's not going to be close enough to make any kind of move right now. Behind, though, there will be some moves with Sainz and Vettel. Sainz, the long way round. Oh, what a move that is for Carlos Sainz in the Haas on the Aston. Up into P8. Beautiful little move there as Leclerc now gains Perez. Ooh, a bit wide there for Perez. Is there a bit of an issue with his car? He's gone. Whoa, oh my God. Perez nearly puts it in the wall. There is an issue with Checo. Maybe his tyres are gone. I don't know. But now he's being attacked by Leclerc. The Ferrari on the inside. And he's just going to get squeezed out. And Perez will get the elbows for P6. But what on earth went on there for the Mexican? He almost drove straight into the wall. He was wide into the uh, second last corner. And then Ocon just got, uh, got him on the, on, the, on the last one. As he nearly just decked it into the wall on the left-hand side. Gives us a bit of room then to work with. And I'd rather the Alp be behind me than the Red Bull car, to be honest, as we now watch on and focus on the home favourite, Piastri, in P12. Can he chase after and overtake Gasly Lando to get into the points? His teammate doing a good enough job, I guess, in P7, but, you know, just uh, lacking, you know. This is not where I thought Ferrari were going to be, but no one could have predicted, you know, just how bad these AI drivers are driving right now. Leclerc and Piastri, low focus, low rating, whatever the case, they're just not up here where I thought they would be fighting us right now for P4. Instead, it's the Alpine, which is kind of nice, to be fair, to see some difference in the top order. Is Oh, my God. Ocon with a real swoop of intent on the outside. We only just about kept that P4 and avoided contact. And all the while, Albon is pulling away 3.7 seconds. The gap now to our teammate. So he is looking ever the more comfortable in P3 as we are forming a train here. But now that we've gotten away a little bit, we're using ERS all the way down this kind of curve in sector two and that's allowing us to pull away and Ocon is now going to be worried about Perez rather than focusing on myself the Red Bull is right up the gearbox of the Frenchman it's a great exit for the Red Bull car DRS open for him and surely he's going to try and make a move the Alpine has DRS but he's a bit defenseless Perez down the inside has the superior downforce in grip and Al the Alpine's doing really well Ocon wants to maintain the P5 and he will just some great scrapping. This is really hard, but fair racing between myself, Ocon, Perez, and I would say Leclerc, but he's not kind of got into the middle of it quite yet, but uh, hopefully he will soon off. But there is Verstappen then. Verstappen into the pits earlier than everyone else because he was on the soft compound. So that actually explains why he was like 2.5 seconds ahead of Hamilton by lap two. It's because he's on softs. The rest of us are on medium. So Lewis now leads the race. Albon second, myself in third. And, uh, you know, you're Others like Lando, who were on the softs, they're yet to pit still. So Verstappen really has come in early. Potentially feeling quite a lot of tire wear by pushing so hard on the softs. And we'll see if that strategy pays out for the Red Bull man as Perez is pressurizing us. But no, his engine's up in smokes. And there's a massive collision with Leclerc. Leclerc is out of the Grand Prix. And Perez is out with him. But Perez effectively took out Leclerc. And Ferrari's luck just, it just can't come through. Ferrari's season goes from bad to worse because Piastri's out the points anyway, and Leclerc is now out the race. He was at least in P7 as Perez's engine goes up in smokes. Once again, the Red Bull powertrain reliability, at least for the Red Bull Works team, is not that great early on in this season. Perez out, and whilst he retired, Leclerc just slammed into the back of him there. Bit of a break check by Perez, I don't know, but I don't know, it's a weird one. I feel like Leclerc could have avoided that. It's a bit of a clumsy racing incident, I guess, but uh, that's just such a mad massive disaster for Ferrari. They did not need that. Leclerc's out, Perez is out, and now the full course safety car is out. So we're all gonna get a free pit stop. Will this somehow help Hamilton versus Verstappen? I don't think so, because there goes Max on the mini-map there. We're gonna double stack with Albon, but because of the gap we had to Sainz behind, it shouldn't be an issue. And also, I want to point out, Ocon had pits before this. That's why Perez was the car right behind me. So we have maintained our P4. Albon is still in P3. 
and Verstappen still leads the way from Hamilton. But we're all bunched back up now, and we're all in the same compound. So, same tyre, Hamilton, let's see how he does. Max won't be able to pull away in the same fashion he did at the start of the race. For us, we have a bit of a poor exit. The, the hard tyres, I tried to weave around and heat them up, but they were so poor on that last corner exit there, as we have a bit of an issue with the front end and the rear as well. Thankfully, though, we do catch up a little bit into turn one, but I can feel the tyres still need to heat up a little bit, as Science now is the one behind us in P5. Vettel, P6, so Ocon's lost that massively as we go deep in the tyres. They're screaming out for temperature and Sainz is trying to overtake us in the Haas. We squeeze him out to just keep ahead. But uh, it's Sainz from Vettel, Russell Magnus and Guan Yu Joan Lando. So Ocon, he was the one who lost out the most in that whole safety car pit stop issue because he pit just before. And Sainz, Vettel, uh, Russell Magnus and Guan Yu Joe, the big winners because even Lando was ahead of most of those guys and he's been jumped. So big win then for Haas, Aston and even Russell there, P7. He can do some work now, Russell, in P7 to make maybe try and get back to a podium so you know what I kind of discounted Russell but he now late game late into this race he just may ruin our team's chance of a podium as he already looks to make some progress on Sebastian Vettel the dive bomb down the inside but the Aston will have the better racing line that curve is so nasty at the inside there so Russell has to maintain P7 instead of Magnussen is actually now right up his gearbox in a train with Guan Yu Zhou Norris and Ocon in there Piastri the home favorite one of the home favorites in P 13 actually the two Australians are right next to each other P13 and 14 not a great day for the Aussies there and not a great day for Ferrari all round as I said Russell goes again second time lucky here on Vettel goes for the moon oh doesn't actually go for it Vettel though instead locks up and Vettel Vettel is in the gravel Oh, Sebastian Vettel, it was all going so well for him and Aston in the top 10. And that is a costly, costly mistake. Russell up into P6 now, has clean air to chase after Carlos Sainz in the Haas, who he should clear. And then it's about if he's going to catch us, maybe. Magnussen now up to P7 in the Williams. That is a really good position for him and Aguanyu Granu Joe and Norris. But yeah, this man may just be seeing the silver arrow right behind him. Meanwhile, we are in P4 still keeping, you know, 1.5. Uh, on Albon so it's not as bad as the medium tyre stint was but again I'm not really catching too much on Albon but I hope I can get into some kind of rhythm because I really do want to try and attack Albon if I can and just see how we measure up to him but right now I've got to say in terms of how we measure up he's got me he's got me in his back pocket so I don't know about that meanwhile that, uh, Verstappen holding off Hamilton the gap is a lot closer than it was you can see on the mini map Lewis is so much closer within DRS so it is game on unlike the first stint uh, lap 17 for us 1.1 1.0 nearly just under one second now so we are gaining on Albon on these straights and slowly reeling him in and once we're in DRS that could be the real winner for us as it is for George Russell to overtake Carlos Sainz potentially but no again on the inside line maybe doesn't make it work but they actually hang on they keep on fighting they're still fighting side by side now through the entire last sector we've had some absolute Absolutely exquisite scraps here around Albert Park. And uh, Russell is now up into P5 then and can come chasing after myself. But I'm hoping, like in Jeddah, he's not going to have the chance. And because I, now I'm now within one second of Albon, just about, when we get into Sector 2, we can reel him in a bit. But the problem is just how good Albon is in Sector 3. You know, we're right there, five tenths behind him right now. But just watch how much time he gains in this sector. And maybe just a lack of confidence for me, not chucking the car in a bit quicker, maybe in a higher gear here and there. I don't know. But we go from five tenths to nearly, this is going to be eight to nine tenths on the exit of the final corner. DRS open to reel us back in and we'll reel him back in in sector one. But that's basically how it's going. We gain in sector one, uh, gain in sector two, lose it all in sector three, and then we go again. So we're just kind of stuck in the same holding pattern, as is the same vibe for Verstappen versus Hamilton. Verstappen has Hamilton covered. 1.5, the gap is grown now. Yellow flags are on Verstappen slow. Oh no, it's a disaster for Red Bull and Max Verstappen as he's going slowly and Hamilton breezes by. Albon and myself breeze by. But Verstappen is out. You cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. You guys can't probably believe it. The luck 
of the reigning champion. And just how poor is the liability of the Red Bull? That's twice now the Red Bull is given up on Verstappen whilst he was in a commanding, controlling lead in Jeddah. Now at Melbourne, here in Australia, Hamilton takes the lead and will now probably go on for a third race win in a row to kick off this season. But let's forget about him again like we did in Jeddah because I don't care. Alexander Albon right now is in P2 and we are in P3. We've got a 2-3 for our team right now. A double podium finish in the third race only of season two. This is insane and you know this is, you know, okay, bit of luck there with Verstappen but we were there to pick up the pieces because we've actually got the pace. I can't catch my teammate Albon. The AI teammate is legitimately there in P2 right now thanks to Verstappen's uh, breakdown but he was there to pick up the pieces. It's just insane insane stuff how good our car is so early on into this season. At 26 though, this scrapping's not over for cars behind Magnussen doing excellent now in P6, but not for much longer because the Alpine pressurizes him into a mistake. He nearly goes straight into the gravel trap. Thankfully for him and Williams keeps it in P7 at least as Norris defends the P8 ahead of Ocon there, but it's still a, that's still going to be an amazing P7 for Magnussen and his new team at Williams. Grand New Joe though again showing he's maybe trying to become the team leader at Alpine the newbie, the pay driver in Alpine, stepping on the Frenchman's toes in the French team meanwhile, back to our POV well, this has been the sight for the entire race, looking at Albon about 5, 6, 10 ahead of us I'm catching him with DRS but I have just not had an answer for him I'll put my hands up, he's just been quicker today, I've, I've, I've been here, keeping him honest the entire bloody race I've been pushing as much as I can, but I just can't gain enough time in these corners to reel him in to make that dive bomb. I hoped I could maybe do it on the last lap, you know, maybe like, you know, save ERS the whole race and then use it all. I am using it all. I'm dumping all my ERS here. We're down to single digits and we're getting three tens close, but I just don't have the front end for it. I think the higher downfall setup for Albon helping out a bit the default setup versus my own, and so uh, I just can't get him, but you know what, I don't actually really mind that much, because the bigger picture here is that, well, one, a disaster class for Red Bull and Ferrari today, Hamilton gets gifted a second win after Jeddah, and makes it three in a row, but it's going to be the team's first double podium, soak it up, drink it in, because this moment is going to be absolutely golden, it's 18 points for Albon, 15 for us. That is absolutely awesome. Back to back podiums from Jeddah to the Albert Park and it's a double podium. Second and third. This is the most insane start to season two ever. That's it for another Grand Prix and a fantastic win for Mercedes. So Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team and they certainly deserve it. Lewis Hamilton really, as you guys are saying in the comments of last episode, on a revenge redemption tour here in season two on F1 22. Three wins in a row and uh, well, what a calamity for Ferrari and Red Bull. Red Bull double retirement, car issues for both cars. That's worse than Ferrari. At least Ferrari had one car in the race, just a bit slow, and the other one got taken out by on the Red Bull. So, um, yeah, Red Bull's having a howler, and they're, they're, they're the team that partners us and supplies our engine. So, we've actually, we're actually the, the, the <laughs> we're the highest rated Red Bull powered team, uh, with Red Bull powertrains in the back of our car, and Red Bull affiliated teams. That is actually insane. And, uh, well, we're, we're well, we, well, they should be thanking us. We're doing a great job at advertising them, I guess, on the podium there. We are now second in the Drivers' Championship. I can't believe what's happened. It's so early doors. I don't think this is this can't last because I am sure other teams will upgrade around us. Red Bull will pull up their socks eventually. But we are ahead of Red Bull now in the Constructors after that double DNF. So that is just uh, uh, biblical. Absolutely biblical. Two... Two of us on the steps of the podium in the third race. 
I, it's just, I can't believe it. Absolutely insane episode. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.